We often see verbal wars between the fighters of two different promotions and wish for a cross promotion event. But now the wait is over. The first true cross promotional event in modern MMA is finally happening this weekend. It is Bellator who is finally taking all the risk and sending its best fighters to the enemy's territory where they will compete against their counterparts under the banner of Ryzen. Bellator is arguably the second biggest MMA promotion while Ryzen's fan following in comparison to Bellator is as low as Bellator's in comparison with the UFC. But unlike UFC, they are taking a very big risk going head to head with poster boys where someone is going to lose. Brand reputation is also on the line but Cocker says it is a risk worth taking. I will be honest that I have never watched a single Ryzen event before but after spending a few hours on Google and Topology etc. I realized this card deserved more appreciation so I decided to make a video on it. I'm the guy with the Indian accent and here I'm gonna tell you why you should not miss this card. The event will take place at Saitama Super Arena in Japan. Fights will take place in a ring rather than Bellator's cage. A 5 fight man card pins some of the biggest Bellator stars against the biggest Ryzen stars. The first 3 fights are not that big because they are looking like mismatches but man and co-man events are enough to watch this event because here Ryzen have the opportunity to shock the world. I'm gonna start this preview from the first fight but you can directly go to the co-man event by clicking on the timestamp. A lightweight bout will kick off the card where Bellator's number 10 ranked lightweight Kaji Rabadanov will fight Ryzen's Koji Takeda. In this fight, Ryzen does not have a big chance because Rabadanov is many steps ahead of Takeda in almost every sense. Gachi Rabadanov will make his way to the ring in his fourth Bellator appearance with a record of 18 wins, 4 losses and 2 draws. He has finished 11 of those 18 wins, 6 of those by knockout and 5 by submission. He can be considered an experienced fighter because despite being 3-0 in the Bellator, he also holds wins in the big promotions like PFL and Eagle FC. This Russian is also a former champion in two local MMA promotions and is currently on a 4-fight win streak. On the other hand, Koji Takeda steps into the ring with a record of 14 wins and 3 losses, two of those wins coming by the way of submission and two by knockout. He is a former deep lightweight champion and is currently on a two-fight win streak. The only advantage he has on Rabadanov is the pressure of the crowd because this fight is happening in his hometown. I still think his streak is going to be broken. Second fight which makes zero sense is a three-rounder flyweight bout between Kiyoji Horiguchi and Hiro Masa Ogikubo. This fight doesn't make sense because of three reasons. Reason number one, both fighters are natural bantamweights but still this fight is scheduled as a flyweight bout. Reason number two, Horiguchi is a current Ryzen's bantamweight champion but here he is representing Bellator. And reason number three is that Horiguchi has already beaten Ogikubo twice. Number 6 in Bellator's bantamweight rankings, Horiguchi's MMA record is 29 wins and 5 losses, 15 of those wins coming by the way of knockout and 3 by submission. His most notable win is over number 9 ranked UFC flyweight Manil Cape. With 52% knockout rate, he is a well-known name in the MMA world because of his accomplishments. He is a former Shuto bantamweight champion former Bellator bantamweight champion and two times and current Ryzen's bantamweight champion. If we talk about his record in big promotions, he is 1-2 in Bellator, 7-1 in UFC and 11-1 in Ryzen's. Despite his very good career, he is currently 2-3 in his last fight and is riding only one fight win streak. On the other hand, Hiromasa Ogikobu will make his way to the ring with a record of 25 wins and 5 losses, 6 of those wins by submission and only 1 by knockout. He is 5-1 in his last 6 and coming off a loss. He is also a former Shuto Bantamweight champion and Ryzen's Grand Prix 2020 tournament winner. He is the alumni of the Ultimate Fighter 24 where he was eliminated in the final round by Tim Elliott. But in the semi-finals of the same tournament, he defeated Alejandre Pantoja, who is now number 2 ranked UFC flyweight. 
Capology ranked Horiguchi as 48th best bantamweight while Ogikubu as 69th best bantamweight fighter. Third fight is a bantamweight bout between Bellator's Juan Archuleta versus Ryzen Suchul Kim. Yuan Archuleta is number 3 in Bellator bantamweight rankings, while Su Chul Kim is number 86 in Topology's regional MMA rankings. Archuleta's record is 26 wins and 4 losses, 11 of those wins coming by the way of knockout and 1 by submission. He's a former bantamweight and featherweight champion in 3 local MMA promotions, former 4 division champion in King of the Cage and former Bellator champion. He is 8-3 in Bellator and 3-2 in his last 5. On the other hand, Su Chul Kim will make his way to the ring with a record of 17 wins, 6 losses and 1 draw, with 6 of those wins by knockout and 5 by submission. He is a former ROFC featherweight champion, RFC featherweight champion, RFC bantamweight champion and 1FC bantamweight champion as well. He is currently riding a 2-fight win streak and lost only 1 fight from his last 13 fights. He has an impressive chin because he has never been stopped with strikes in his 24 fight career. Now let's talk about the co-man event. The co-man event of the evening is lightweight bout between AJ McKee and Roberto de Souza. McKee is a former Bellator featherweight champion who moved up a division because now he has his sights on the lightweight gold. He is already demanding a shot at lightweight gold, which he may get with a win this weekend. Mickey is just 27 years old yet and has already made many records in Bellator, including most consecutive victories, most submission wins and most stoppage wins in Bellator history. His MMA record is 19 wins and only 1 loss. 6 of those wins came by the way of knockout and 7 by submission. He is coming off an impressive performance win over Spike Carlel in Bellator 286 in October. Roberto de Souza, on the other hand, is Ryzen's lightweight champion and will make his way to the ring with a record of 13 wins and only 1 loss with 4 of those wins by knockout and 9 by submission. The fact that he has 100% finish rate and never went to the third round in his career is amazing. 12 of his 14 fights ended in the very first round, so we can expect fireworks. He is also a very impressive grappler with a grappling record of 8 wins, 3 losses and 4 draws. He has also fought grappling king Ryan Gordon in 2018 and guess what, the match was a draw. Ryan Gordon who defeats everyone couldn't defeat him. Mickey is also good on the ground so this fight is a must watch where anything can happen at any moment. The headliner of the event is a champ vs champ bout. Bellator featherweight champion Patricio Pitbull vs Ryzen's featherweight champion Kleber Koike Erbest. Patricio Pitbull is pound for pound number one in Bellator rankings and former double champ who held featherweight and lightweight titles simultaneously. He also holds some of the big records like most wins in Bellator history and most title fight wins in Bellator history etc. He steps into the ring with a record of 34 wins and 5 losses, 11 of those wins coming by the way of knockout and 12 by submission. He's right now on a 2 fight win streak while 9 and 1 in his last 10 fights. His most notable win is over so called most entertaining UFC fighter Michael Chandler when he finished Chandler in the very first round for the lightweight gold and became second double champ in Bellator's history. Herbist on the other hand has as much experience and skills as Patricio Pitbull. Herbist will make his way to the ring with a record of 31 wins, 5 losses and 1 draw. He has an extraordinary 93% finish rate because 29 of his 31 wins didn't need any judge. Two of his wins came by knockout and 27 by submission. Since 2016, he fought 14 fights and lost only one from Mataj Gamrod. The stats suggest Pitbull has a large advantage in power over Erbest, boasting a 32% knockout percentage over Erbest 6%. If the fight goes to the ground, their records suggest Herbist will have a massive advantage over Pitbull, boosting at 87% submission rate over Pitbull's 35%. Herbist is 2 years younger than Pitbull. He also has a height advantage of 4 inches over Pitbull. This also extends to a 5 inch reach advantage. 
Bellator sending their pound for pound king in enemy's territory shows how serious they are about this event and how big a risk they are taking. They really deserve appreciation because this decision that they took for fans can really harm their reputation. Tell me if you are going to watch it or not and if yes then what is your prediction. Now that's all, we will meet in the next video so till then do whatever you want.